With Genshin Impact 3.1, we got the release of Sino, and while he's no meta-breaking character, he's certainly a solid one, and a lot of people are really enjoying his playstyle, especially with the addition of the different Dendro-related reactions with Electro between Aggravate and Hyperplume. A lot of people are putting him in their teams and having a great time. Hi, my name is Blossoms and welcome to another Genshin Impact video and today we're going to be going over our Sino build guide, how you're going to want to build him, the different weapons you're going to want to utilize on him, as well as some different team pairings and some general play style tips. So we've got a lot to cover, let's go ahead and get into it. First off, we'll start with his talents and how they all work. Well, Sino is a very greedy DPS character, very similar to a character like Zhao, where he demands to be on the field for a pretty long duration. And the reason for this is due to his elemental burst. Whenever you cast his elemental burst, you go into the pack sworn path clear mode. And basically his normal charge and plunging attacks all are converted to electro damage. That can't be overridden or anything. He gets an elemental mastery bump and a resistance interruption uh, bump there and he gains an immunity to electro charge so you won't get stun locked if you electro charge yourself then the elemental burst will be cancelled if he leaves the field or you hit a maximum of 18 seconds and you might be saying a maximum of 18 seconds and that's because the base duration is 10 seconds here however he does have an additional mechanic that actually extends his elemental burst and the way he extends his elemental burst is through his E skill here, which is very similar to Zhao's E skill. You dash forward and deal electro damage, except he can't use this one in air, unfortunately. However, when he's in his elemental burst, it becomes a little bit different. It's more of a razor hold E skill style slam, and it deals AOE electro damage similar to that hold uh, E razor slam there. And it also extends the duration of your pack sworn path clear, your elemental burst uh, state there. And you'll see here that when you do that E skill, it increases the duration by four whole seconds there. So you're going to be able to get these E skills pretty often. And you'll also notice that the base cooldown is 7.5, but when you're in the elemental burst, it's only a three second cooldown. So you're going to be able to do a lot of those E skills and they're going to deal some considerable damage, more damage than they would normally do. So they're quite good. They extend your elemental burst. And if you couldn't tell, both of these are very integral to actually building your Sino. You're going to need to level up not only the elemental burst but the elemental skill as well and you'll know here when he's in his elemental burst his normal attacks now scale uh off of his elemental burst instead of his normal attacks so you don't really need to level up these normal attacks unless you just want to use him as a normal attacker outside of his elemental burst but when he's elemental burst they consider these scalers here so you only really need to level up the elemental burst in the e skill and you could ignore the normal attacks for the most part and just a brief reminder here the elemental mastery bonus is 100 there i did mention he gets an elemental mastery bonus so whenever you cast his elemental burst you just get a free 100 elemental mastery which is very nice uh, it has a cooldown of 20 seconds and if you're hitting the maximum duration that's only a two second downtime and an 80 cost so you are going to have to consider your energy recharge but that's not all to his kit. He also has some different stuff going on with his passives here. Uh, namely, one of the more important ones is the Featherfall Judgment. Basically, uh, if you just want to boil this down, when he's in his elemental burst at certain intervals, he'll go into a state in which when you cast his E skill, it will deal 35% additional damage and fire off three Dust Stalker bolts that deal 100% of his attack as electro damage. And Dust Stalker bolt damage is considered elemental skill damage there, just as a reference. And you'll know when you're in the state when like an eye starts to surround the screen. And when you hit the E skill while that eye is around the screen, you're going to get that extra 35% damage and those three extra Dust Stalker bolts, allowing you to deal uh, considerable more damage than you would normally. And then one of his last passes here is probably the most important is the his damage values will be increased based on his elemental mastery as follows so when he's in the actual elemental burst his normal attack damage is increased by 150 percent of his elemental mastery and then the dust stalker bolt damage from his passive talent the featherfall judgment that we just went over is increased by 250 percent of his elemental mastery so elemental mastery is going to be very important for this guy and uh, whether you're building electro charge aggravate or hyper bloom uh, he's really going to want uh, uh, elemental mastery there because it's going to be adding to his damage in general and also to your reaction damage. So the way Saito's kit is built out here, he really wants to be on the field all the time, and that can be an issue similar to how Zhao works, to where his elemental burst is just so long, your supports generally aren't supporting at one point or another. This really isn't a big deal. We've definitely gotten a lot of other characters that lend themselves to 
helping uh, characters like that out, like a character like Yolan's really good. The new Dendro Traveler has a good duration on their elemental burst, especially if you have one of the constellations that increases the duration a little bit. So although nothing is necessarily going to last as long as him and his elemental burst, just because it does take a second or two to get back over to him after casting them, uh, you'll still have ample support during his elemental burst and swapping off a little early really isn't that big of a deal as you'll likely be wanting to get back to your supports in order to you know do the rotation again but do just keep in mind you are of course going to want to consider teammates that have elemental bursts that can actually support him during the long duration of his elemental burst as well as potential teammates that can heal or protect him during that elemental burst because he does he's not necessarily like a very tanky character or anything so he's going to need a little bit protection or you're just going to have to be making sure that you're paying attention uh when enemies come at you I'll also note here that when he's in his elemental burst, he is very mobile. His normal attacks will cover distance pretty well, uh, which is really nice just due to the fact that you don't necessarily have to worry as much about crowd control and whatnot as the elemental burst is able to close the gap very effectively and go after opponents. This can be a little annoying if your supports are uh, pretty stationary, but when you have characters like Yulon and a really big AoE like Dendro Traveler, it's not nearly as big of a deal. And I'm sure we're going to get other units that can really lend themselves to Sino and support him even better. But even then, he's still really solid right now and he has a lot of different options. So let's talk about artifact sets here and when considering artifact sets and what kind of set bonus you want for them, you have two real main options to go for in my opinion. That's going to be between the Gilded Dreams and between the Thundering Fury. Now you do have some other options, but let's briefly go over these. Gilded Dreams is amazing because you get elemental mastery and then on top of that, whenever you're uh, triggering elemental reactions, you get elemental mastery and attack percent based on you know, how many party members you have of the same type or different types and whatnot. So if you have a character of the same type, you get attack percent. If you have a character of a different type, you get element of mastery. And both of these are actually really good for Sino because the Electro Resonance is really solid to help him get his elemental burst back. And you're giving him some attack, which is good for another reason when we get into main sets. And then the elemental mastery is, of course, always going to be really good on him. As we mentioned before, he has all those different scalings with his elemental mastery. And then something like the Thundering Fury is really good because, of course, you get Electro Damage Bonus, which is is very nice but also you get the bump to your reactions by 40 percent there and you get the uh elemental skill cooldown stuff and this is really good on sino especially in the elemental burst because there are going to be times where you do the elemental burst and it'll be back up and ready for you to use it again almost immediately because it only has a three second cooldown you start doing this enough then you're basically just going to be doing them back to back now this does have a sort of issue uh in the sense that at one point or another, the timing for this is going to get a little wonky and you're going to miss the timing in which you can activate Thundering Fury again, missing one of the activations. So that can get a little wonky. From what I hear, though, if you have an attack speed increase on Sino in some way, that pretty much mitigates it for the most part. He has a constellation that gives him an attack speed increase, I believe, but there are other ways to get some attack speed increases. So just keep that in mind. I still think it's a phenomenal set whether or not you have that attack speed increase, but do remember that you are are going to be missing a couple activations of that skill cooldown uh, decrease there just by the way it ends up working. But those aren't your only set options. You have a couple other set options, namely things like the four piece gladiator are probably going to be one of the better options as you get some attack, you get some normal attack increases there. That's pretty nice. I still don't think it's as good as the other sets that we mentioned, but it's quite solid. I really wouldn't recommend something like Shiminawa's just because he can't really afford to be losing that much energy as uh, he definitely needs some energy and there's not a lot of room for it on his actual build. So you're either going to be battering him or just finding some decent sub stats and making sure you're trying to generate as much energy as you can for him. So I don't think he can really afford something like Shiminawa's. Something like Echoes of an Offering is OK, I guess. I really wouldn't recommend it, but it is definitely an option. You get an increase on your normal attacks every now and then. And then one last honorable mention is, of course, the Retracing Bolide that increases your shield strength as well as give you 40% additional damage on your normal and charged attacks, which is very good because, as I said, he's pretty vulnerable while he's just going in on his elemental burst and he could get one shot pretty easily. So having a shield can be quite handy. And if you're going to have a shield anyway, something like Retracing Bullet can really help you out, especially if you don't have access to the other artist setbacks sets that we mentioned. But for this, we'll be using Gilded Dreams as that's the best, in my opinion. 
but what main stats do you want to go for as there are a couple of options and you're really just going to have to make the best decision based on the artifacts you have and the major thing you're going to have to choose between is going to be on your sands whether that be elemental mastery for your sino or attack percentage for your sino as they're both really good options and technically elemental mastery is better especially if you're doing some sort of hyper bloom or aggravate team that this is going to be technically better but this isn't very far behind with the attack percent sands here so if you have an attack percent sands with better substats then maybe use your attack percent sands instead of the elemental mastery and it's more so just going to be case by case at that point it's really just going to be whatever puts you at the best kind of stat ratio. Maybe you even have an attack percent uh, sans here with a ton of elemental mastery or something, then that might be better than just doing elemental mastery sans that doesn't have good subsets or something really case by case. And I would just pick the better of the two that you may have. For the goblet, electro damage, and then for the circlet, crit rate or crit damage, whatever is going to help your ratio the most. So the build isn't very complicated here. That main stat thing that I mentioned before is really the only main concern. And then after that, you can worry about your subsets and the things you'll want to be looking for there are of course crit rate and crit damage as this is a main DPS character, but energy recharge is going to be very valuable to look out for too, to make sure you're trying to get that elemental burst off of cooldown. Attack percent is of course always welcome, but elemental mastery is also a phenomenal thing to be looking for as well uh, that I mentioned before because you get that additional scaling. So pretty much crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, energy recharge, and elemental mastery are going to want to be the things you look out for. I would try to focus on crit rate, crit damage, and energy recharge uh, as the first priority just to make sure you're getting that good uh, you know, ratio for your crit rate and crit damage and then getting that good consistency with your elemental burst and then you can worry about things like attack percent or elemental mastery. And as for weapons for Sino, you have plenty of options, thankfully. I was lucky enough to get his signature weapon on the recent banner, where you get a ton of crit rate from it, as well as some additional attack from Elemental Mastery. And then when your Elemental Skill deals damage, you gain stacks of uh, attack based on your Elemental Mastery as well. Max three stacks there, so this is going to be his best in slot pretty much you know tailor made for him basically it's a phenomenal spear all around i actually made a video talking about it uh, in the previous video it's quite good but a lot of people don't have access to this and in fact if you have access to a lot of the other five star spear options then they're likely going to be a good pick for him especially if it's one of the crit rate or crit damage ones they're likely going to be a really solid pick on him uh and you know work really well overall but let's talk about the four star options for him the deathmatch being a really good option on him you get plenty of attack and defense which will help with some of that survivability that we talked about earlier and you get plenty of crit right there all around a pretty decent one and it having low base attack isn't as big a deal on him because as we mentioned before elemental mastery is generally going to be a bit more valuable on him just because he's gaining so much damage from his elemental mastery but speaking of elemental mastery and attack, the brand new missive wind spear is actually a phenomenal option for him. It's a really good free to play. You get attack percent here, and then whenever you uh, trigger an elemental reaction, you get attack percent and elemental mastery. It's actually really solid on him and I'd recommend it as a good free to play option. Then of course something like the prototype star glitter is pretty good as a craftable option as well. You get a bit of energy recharge to help you if you're missing on the substats and then when you use your elemental skill it increases your normal and charge attack damage which is quite nice and then you could also consider something like the moon piercer for the elemental mastery substat and the attack increase you get from its passive whenever you pick up the little leaves there. Not a bad option either. And then one more thing I wanted to point out is the Keytain Cross Spear. Quite good. You get Elemental Mastery here, extra damage on your E skill, which is very good, and a way to slowly generate your energy. It does take away a little bit of energy, but overall you net more energy. So this is a really solid option and I wouldn't sleep on it. This is pretty good, especially since it does increase that elemental skill damage, meaning when you're in your elemental burst, you're not only going to help yourself by generating some energy with your E skills, but you're also going to be dealing more damage with those E skills that scale with elemental mastery and this has good base attack i think this is honestly one of the better four star options in my opinion but of course you do still have plenty of options like deathmatch black cliff polearm which i forgot to mention crit damage is of course fine on him the brand new missive wind spear is very good he has a lot of different four star options and in fact he even has a three star option uh, if you really need it you don't have any of these that i mentioned before white tassel is phenomenal on him as well you get crit rate from it so if you need crit rate great but you also get increased normal attack damage by 48 percent and we mentioned before 
before that base attack isn't nearly as impactful on Sino as it is on other characters because he cares about his elemental mastery and scales with it so much. So missing out on that attack isn't as big of a deal. It definitely does still hurt. Don't get me wrong, but White Tassel is still a phenomenal option for him, especially since you're getting that normal attack damage increase as well as some additional crit rate. But yeah, as I said, he's a character that has a ton of options. My favorite four stars, probably the Keytain Cross Spear, and then all of the other options are honestly still phenomenal. So pick whatever you have available or whatever you have the most refined and go for that. But at the end of the day, what do my Sino stats end up looking like? Well, uh, we end up with 1700 attack. And when I get the stacks on the spear, it ends up at like 2000. We get 329 elemental mastery, which is pretty solid. And we get some increase in that as well through the Gilded Dreams. And then we end up with a ratio of 68 and 167 crit damage. This isn't bad, but I would recommend trying to get a little bit more crit damage here and even a little bit more crit rate, preferably. But I'm working with what I got with the Gilded Dreams so far and 100 122 energy recharge really isn't that bad, especially if you're pairing him with like a battery or another electro character to help him get that elemental burst off of cooldown. But if you aren't pairing him with another electro character or maybe somebody with like a Favonius weapon or something, then you're going to want to be shooting for something like 140 or 160 ish to make sure you're getting that elemental burst off of cooldown. And just so you know how I got each and every one of those stats, I will briefly go over all of my artifacts so you know how I got to where I am, and then we'll continue. All right, since this build guide's already getting a little long, we're just gonna do some team stuff very briefly here. If you guys want some full teams or a full team guide video or something, I will be more than happy to go ahead and make that. Let me know in the comment section below, but just as a general kind of talking points for Sino teams, Elemental Resonance you're really going to want to look for or Electro Resonance and Dedro Resonance because this is going to help his burst up time with the Electro Resonance giving him more of those Electro Particles and then of course Dendro Resonance being very good because you get pretty much free elemental mastery, which as we've mentioned plenty of times is very good on Sino. However, things like the uh, Pyro Resonance and the uh, Geo Resonance aren't too bad on him or anything. It's just finding characters to allow Sino to pop off with and have those resonances is a little difficult, so I can't really recommend them. Then when it comes to looking for teammates for Sino, you're going to want to look for teammates that can actually uh, keep up with Sino and how long his elemental burst is and heal slash protect him while he's in said elemental burst because he's not extremely tanky while he's doing that. So having a healer like Kuki Shinobu or maybe a shielder or something to protect him while in said elemental burst like Zhongli is very valuable for him. Not to mention other characters that pair well with him, like the Dendro MC, who not only help with the Dendro related reactions like Aggravate or Hyper Bloom, the Dendro NC also provides a little bit of additional elemental mastery, which goes a long way on Sino. And in fact, he's actually got quite a lot of good pairings. Uh, characters like Shingshou and Yalan are fantastic. They help him out a ton. And then even characters like Ayato and Yoon Jin are very good for him as well with their normal attack buffs. I think Toma is super slept on despite his pyro application. It's not consistent enough to really be a problem and Overload isn't annoying because uh, Sino is so highly mobile. Beto is very good for crowd control and also has a shield depending on how many constellations you have for and provides that damage resistance. He's got a lot of potential characters to mess around with. The biggest issue for Sino right now is our lack of a Dendro healer because the moment you start trying to create some of these more interesting teams, you start realizing that you're lacking the uh, slot that can not only heal, but also provide you with some consistent application of one of the elements you need to do said reaction you're trying to do. But hey, I do think that'll be about it for this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope it helped you build your Sino as I've been having a ton of fun with him and he's a really fun DPS character and I think he has some really interesting pairings that are only going to get more interesting as we get access to more and different or interesting Dendro characters because Hyper Bloom and Aggravate with him are just an absolute blast. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below how you're building your Sino if you're doing anything differently. I'd like to see all that and more uh, down there. But other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Blossoms and I'll see you in the next video.